Boy, Janno Circus Restaurant. Yes, I know who be Nina Dimbal. Number Domoro Kalajano. Domoro Senata, Adiata, Topotoro, Fanan Kendama Bigay. Luntan During, Tamala, Abeka Domoro Kijani, Adimanda Wallade, Takawe Vijele, and Impanan Kafa Dijang, Ukono Fa. A government of pastry and in bakery, Uko Fanan Bekal. Bad day lumba, conference lumba, workshop lumba, you four ten in London, Dunia Kono. Domoro Betama, Nilum International Otoda, number one. Amanke Badomola Jandam. Is I Domo Jang is Ataria. Awamuku Bandi. Sad Napo is Afutendin. Eh, Otto San Napo be Musikas restaurant. Dabon and Janamuyat, Niman Jerombia. Aban. Seekers restaurant, known for best quality food and customer satisfaction. Communication, connectivity is everything. We ensure that the links never sleep. Quantities and qualities, all in our data service, providing efficient, reliable voice and data service. We believe if you're not up to speed, then you're going backwards. Communications have to flow as fast as the speed of light. Whatever business you're in, having someone who understands your needs is critical. That is why we just don't offer you technology, we offer you solutions. Enjoy Gamsel's internet broadband anytime, anywhere. Your national operator, Gamsel, Yaibarom. Alright. Honey, did you remind him that the last time he sent the money, it was not enough to buy all the provisions? Oh, sorry, I forgot to tell him. Are you guys talking about money transfer to buy provisions? Yes. yes, but don't you know about Baluo? 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 What is Baluo? Baluo is a service that your son can use to send provisions directly to you guys from the shop. And you don't have to worry about the exchange rates. Tell me how Baluo works. It's very simple. Just log on to baluo.com and shop or download the app on your phone. You can shop on the website or using the app to buy online basic products for your family and friends. With Baluo, you decide what your money is spent on. Your money, your choice. Buy online products for your family and friends in the Gambia, Senegal, Nigeria or Mali. Baluo, better than sending money. of owning your dream homes. EJ Investment is here for you. Secure our quality bungalows with two, three, or four bedrooms or our story buildings, three or four to five bedrooms at very affordable prices with flexible payment plans at our Sanyang Sea View Estate where you can enjoy the cool breeze with modern infrastructure such as the roads, covered drainage system, modern electrification with street lights, gated entrance with security posts, and social amenities such as gas station, shopping mall, medical clinic, park, schools, 
Children Daycare and Latmore, our dedicated team of professionals will keep the estate clean at all times, provide security and patrol team within the estate premises, install latest technologies such as CCTV, Wi-Fi, home network installation, solar panel, and power backup system. Also, check out for our additional home facilities and interior design service, such as premium tiling, wall plaster, home landscape, fingerprint home lock, and a lot more. Visit our office at Senegambia Kololi Highway and get a free site visit tour or contact us on 4464-838. WhatsApp us on 3259-220. Or you can visit our Facebook page or Instagram on EJ Investments. EJ Investments, we are first in properties. Albert, <laughs> 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 solicitors a legal excellence firm in london that can help you with all aspects of your legal work if you are looking at immigrating to the united kingdom stewart and co can help you to set up business buy houses in the uk and will deal with all your legal works from start to finish for all your general immigration work we can help you with that as well if you apply for any form of visa where the student visas settlement visas marriage visas or a child wanting to come to the United Kingdom to settle with the family, we can help you to achieve your goals. Stewart and Co. Solicitors, a legal excellence firm specializing in conveyancing, immigration, litigation, family law, personal injury, licensing, no win, no fee. Contact us today at www.sk-solicitors.com. Thank you. 
Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. We apologize for the delay in uh, starting this particular hearing. Uh, we, we intend to call Mrs. Fatu Jain Senghor uh, to assist the Commission by giving us uh, an NGO perspective of uh, some of the significant rights violations that occurred during the uh, period of uh, our mandated investigations. In particular, she would first look at um, the, the rights violations that pertain to her main focus of work, uh, which is Article 19 issues, freedom of expression. Mr. Chair, the, the Commission would recall that one of the themes we have investigated is the muscling of the media uh, by President Jame as an effort to further entrench himself in power and to cement his dictatorship. And in that, we looked at how he had attacked uh, both the print uh, and the uh, broadcasting media. Uh, so, and we looked at it from the perspective of the media practitioners. Mrs. Senghor's testimony today would look at it from the advocacy angle, the angle of uh, human rights organizations that have worked assiduously in order to check uh, Gambia government actions uh, insofar as journalists and media practitioners are concerned during the relevant period. Uh, but her work was not only limited to Article 19 issues or freedom of expression issues, it extended to other human rights issues, and she so talked about how uh, her organization and other organizations have helped uh, to ensure that uh, the human rights uh, violations in Gambia are brought to the, to the public knowledge and the knowledge of the international community. <laughs> Beyond that, she so would talk about all the assistance uh, her organization and other organizations have given to uh, so-called Gambian dissidents or defenders of human rights who had to escape the jurisdiction uh, for it in order to save their lives and have passed through Senegal or other countries where they came into contact with her organization or organizations of similar character. And uh, in addition to that, uh, since we're trying to establish the historical record of what happened during the 22 years of JAME, including up to January 2017, uh, we would look at uh, seminal events during the impasse and the various activities uh, uh, that she carried out and uh, some of the issues they had to deal with to ensure that they protected the vote of the Gambian people and therefore the sovereign will of the people by ensuring that Jame left power and that the winner of that uh, December 2016 election was sworn into office and uh, to take over power and to become the lawfully and legitimately uh, elected president of the Republic of the Gambia. That would, in essence, be the main uh, trust of her testimony. And uh, we believe that these are very significant in helping us establish the historical record, but also have a better understanding of some of the things that happened in this country during the re relevant period. And I'm happy to announce that Hadidande Jabi who, uh, would lead the witness in her testimony. Thank you. Uh, you may please proceed. Can you get the witness? Yeah. Thank you. Please get a witness, Sama, so we can go on. Thank you.
Yes, sir. Is, is there a problem? No? Oh, okay. I thought we'd be done saying off. I thought we'd be done saying off. I thought we'd be done saying off. Do swear that. Do swear that. I'll speak the truth. I'll speak the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon, Madam Witness. Afternoon. Uh, you may make yourself comfortable before we proceed. As lawyers, I know we carry a lot of luggage with us. We have to organize ourselves. Welcome to the TRRC. Thank you. And thank you for the willingness to come and testify before this commission today. It is norm that we do an interpretation in a local language, so we shall be having interpretation in the wall of language which means that I would urge you to give a few seconds between my questions and your answers so that the interpretation can be heard. Okay. But today we shall go through a few issues. We shall tell the commission about your background, including your educational background. We shall tell the commission about your work as a human rights defender. The Commission would like to hear the interesting stories about your journey with Article 19. And the work that you did with the Gambia under Article 19. The Commission would like to hear from you about the human rights situation in the Gambia. During your work and your experience as a human rights defender. As someone who is au fait with the law and experienced. The commission would like to hear from you about the January 2017 impasse in the Gambia. Commission, we na buga na yon ham weri January 2017 impasse. Bo bunga ham ne mofi hewon. You shall also tell this commission the role you played during the inauguration of the president now, which was held in Dakar, Senegal. Akta Hawaii binga ham ne jelo nga ko binyo fal president bin ame legini cha Dakar cha wat gampa defo. 
If you're comfortable and happy to proceed, we may continue now. Can you please state your names for this commission? Can you tell the commission where you were born? I was born in Banjul. And your date of birth, please? Best way. At where we? 10th April 1970. Fukifan Siweri, April, Atum 1970. Can you tell this commission about your educational background? I started uh, nursery school here. Man, Fila Dore nursery school, Moy Njang, Minjaka, Moy Vinjati, Silo Hodijang, Gai Jangi, Moy nursery school. And uh, around the age of seven, moved to Senegal. Echi Jurumyari at Madel di Toho, Senegal. And uh, it started uh, primary school until uh, form two. Uh, I did my elementary school and uh, started high school until form two. Uh, Madal did my elementary, my primary school, buntu bunjaku be dem jehal dem high school be kaji nyareli at the high the form two. And when the school uh, opened here, which was the Senegalese school, which was the lycée. Uh, Senegal is Lise Bibi's high school in Senegal. If you've been in Ubefi, I was moved back here. A new Daldima Fidel Law at Fee. And I proceeded to complete my O level and then uh, A level, which is the baccalaureate. Ma Daldi Jehal Nafi, it's my O level, a ketamine to my A level, the Makama Mohammed, Nunko Genahami Baccalaureate, France. Then after that, uh, I briefly enrolled at the University Shanta Job of Senegal. Madame de Dem Senegal, the University Shanta Job. I started law there. For one year. Ben at. 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 Ben I did all my academic uh, education. I got my first degree in 95. I got my first degree in 95. Then I had my bachelor's in law, civil law, in uh, 1996. I got my civil law. Uh, in 1997, I did my master's in international and European community law. In 1997, the same year, I did uh, uh, another bachelor in uh, English law specialty, which was a combined program between uh, a university and Cambridge to do common law. Comparative, comparative law. And, uh, in uh, in uh, 1998, I enrolled for an LLM. It's in 1998, LML. On uh, a specialized program on uh, communication and media laws, when uh, I graduated. Or specialize in media and telecommunication law. Ci loi bo xamné ni mu ngi jëm ci walli tassam xibar ak mbiri jokko. after that I started a PhD as a, as a fellow and uh, after that I came back to the Gambia. Ma continue té men lu jëm ci walli maxamam PhD gannaaw lool na ci la doora ñew fi ci rewi Gambia. After that I did uh, uh, many other courses some short some longer. Different in human rights. Uh, yeah, so that's in nutshell, that's uh, my education background. Madam Witness, Say at times it. it would be convenient to be looking at me okay. so that right. we can have the conversation. All right. Is it correct that at some point you did a summer job before you entered into university? Yes, I did. I did a summer job. 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 I did
Yes, yes. After after the baccalaureate, oh. I worked for three months at Radio One FM. Wow. Gan now baccalaureate binak dal din adef linit umbuchiwale netiwer. Radio One FM. Radio One FM. And I think oh, I I I, uh, I also graduated for. Uh, in 1995, uh, around the same time for my first graduate uh, for international relationship, international relation and development. I, I forgot that bit. I didn't get that one. Okay. Na 1995, I'm not very young, but I'm And it was in international relations. Apart from the education that you did, you've also served on several boards where you've gained experience. Can you tell this commission about some of those committees and boards that you served as a member? Uh, yes, I served in uh, many committees uh, uh, in across uh, Africa. Uh, few of them, I think. Uh, I was the first chair of uh, uh, a committee that was set up to work on access to information uh, after the Windock Plus 20, uh, and, uh, whose objective was to uh, promote 28 September as the right to know day. And uh, I also served uh, in, a, as a, in the Africa Regional Group uh, for Amnesty International. What do you translate, Bobo? Madam Witness, the conversation today is a bit technical, so if we may take it slow so that the interpreters can get okay. the conversation to interpret. Thank you. Okay, I serve in, uh, in different board, uh, the API, we call it the African Platform on Access to Information. I serve in the board, but I have the API African Information Board in Africa. Uh, I served also in a board for to advise African offices for Amnesty International as a partner. I served recently in the committee set up by the African Commission on Human and People's Rights to review the one of the declarations uh, on freedom of expression. Uh, and also I served as the board of directors of GRTS. And uh, also member of the Africa Pan African Human Rights Defenders Network. Africa witness. From the background you have given us, it shows that you have a vast knowledge in media. And also very vast knowledge in human rights. At this point, can you tell us about your human rights career? After my studies, I came back into Gambia. Ganao suma njanga na kuda mbuyo delsi wa future we Gambia. And I started to work at the Institute for Human Rights and Development in, in Africa. Makuma si di liange lige na kiti buntu binga kama ni njia kwenye tulijemti wali yalefu na adamu future Africa. I spent there three years. 
nek na fa nak ci diiram ñetti at we worked uh, on uh, on different uh, uh, different programs ñu liggey nak ci programme yu bari ñu uté i was the first uh, because the institute was set up uh, i think around 1997 1998 so i came in 1999 so apart from the management i was the first program officer man may ngel benni program officer ndax lool ñu ko sos ci atum 1998 jëm 1999 and uh, we started to work on different programs eh ñu commencé nak di liggéey ci ay programme yo xamné ni bokkuñ and these programs involve the african regional human rights system eh programme bi na mo ngi bokk ci yi nga xamné ñoy doxal mbir yelle fi dom adama ci walli africa yes the well i'm sure you people from the institute already came to testify here so the the institute was really set up to fill a special gap in term of uh, access to knowledge of african citizens in uh, the of the regional mechanism bunta bi na dañ ko ubbon rek pour tej yak yenn digalo yu bari li nga xamne mu ngi jëm ci walli xam xam bu aju ci walli ni ñi dek foralé der li ni diwani africa uh, and one of the focus was really to train lawyers bokk na ci ben understand the system ben nak ci jubluway yi mo don pour tagan ñi nga xamne ni ñoy way taskati xibaar yi pour ñu xam nak yoon wi lawyers lawyers yi lawyers yi jegal leen and also to ensure that the judicial systems in the different countries at least they were offered with uh, the regional norms charters and also to create uh, some platform for lawyers to litigate human rights ak uh, tamen africa yi ubi yenn pencé yi tamen ngir nak loya yi mëna doxal nak li nga xamné ni mu ngi jëm ci walli xaxi doom adama ci africa yeah in a nutshell i think that was the the the, the main purpose uh, uh, of the of the institute ci gatal dal danaka lool mo nekkon djublu way bi gëna fess nak ci buntu liggéeykay bobu is it also correct that this um, training you talked about for lawyers extended to the judicial system ndax mën na ñoo wax ne ñangam mi nga xamne ñu ngi ko doon defal loya yi yaatal ngeen ko be ci bunti ATK yi yes uh, they were twofold in fact they were more like intensive trainings for lawyers but also for the judges uh, uh, we were organizing more like colloquia uh, colloquiums and uh, also we were doing a lot of exchanges uh, in terms of uh, bringing other judges from different common law countries to really exchange jurisprudence and uh, good practices so for the law, for the judges it was more high level high level uh, kind of interactions for lawyers it was more like really to train them to to be part of the a community that will promote the african regional system of human rights but also to create a new kind of breed of lawyer who will be interested in litigating human rights in their different countries lim do wara moy genon nañu xotal ci njang mom nak lu jëm ci walli loya yi waye bolé won nañ ci tamen atekat yu magi lool yépp rek ngir gëna mëna yoyefal nak li nga xamné ni mu ngi jëm ci seen walli até is it also correct to say that you developed the program that would actually initiate gambian lawyers ndax mën nañ ñoo wax ne nak yow ya yaatal programme bi nga xamne duggal nañ ci loya gambia yi yes when i when i joined because uh, of course the situation in the country was quite difficult as we all know jamono bi may dugg nak ñep xamne ne nekkin bi won fi ci rewi gambia jafé won de ñep xamne ko so uh, there were little interest in uh, working i guess on the gambia and also the gambian actors were not very involved or interested in the work of the human rights institutions ñi nga xamne ño walo nak ci walli liggéey fi ci rew gambia dal seen aajo fessu ton li nga xamne ni mu ngi jëm ci walli yelle fi doom adama that struck me quite a lot because as you all know the gambia is the headquarters of the african commission ndax lool nak dal di won dama xool lool bu baax ndax ñep xamne ni Gambia moy makan gu magi ci African Commission di penj Africa mi the African Center also and we have the, we had the institute so they were really three main uh, human right bodies that had continental dimension based in the Gambia but when I joined the institute I realized that 
the Gambians who were not participating in the programs. Amna nyati bunte yo hamne yep nak don khetunu aglu aglu aju chimbiri yoi te te ben yep jubal bapu Gambia. Why be my dugu nak gisna ni dal Gambia mnyomi te ben dal dal di onu onu chikud nuna. And also we didn't have a specific programs for for the Gambia. Te te ben amu yon nak program yo hamne ni machena lu jemchi wa li Gambia. After different tractations, uh, many months, at least we agreed that we should try and begin some soft programs uh, for training, yeah. sensitizing the judges and really uh, and the lawyers through kind of uh, general workshops and then try and progress into more hardcore subjects to, to really get some buy-in uh, from, from them. Di dah hal itu memang lingkah kami ni mungkin jam siang ni pinch yo kami ni dengan cikgu nama nak kertal lingkah kami ni mungkin dapat cendera wali lagi. Earlier on, you said at that time we know Gambia was difficult. Cikgu na wah gane, hamun ham nanya zaman ubu ubu deh Gambia dapat jafe won. Can you explain to this commission what you meant by that statement? Dengan mana leral commission mereka dugu gula citeki. Um, they were, they were, uh, we, we know that uh, at that time they were almost still the military regime. Of course, they've changed into civilian. And uh, the legal framework also was quite harsh uh, when it comes to expression, public participation. So it was quite clear that uh, the, the framework was not really conducive for, for people to, to, to express their dis dissent, uh, but also to, for, for judges and lawyers to, to, be, to, be, uh, to be kind of uh, audacious. So what we've realized at that time was uh, there were a lot of also court cases. I remember one vividly. I think it was Justice Chamber. When I came, I think that was quite a case when they said there are no human rights law in the Gambia. I'm not in the manu ite men kom chi ngurgo gisne ite men dal lin ketu nyon bubah chi wali yele fidom adamo munen chi patele ku yen sa sa de moi leo bo hamne ni wohon nen cha ne de amu fi human rights law ya human rights law law ay bo hamne ni mungi dem chi wali human rights de wali aki dom adamo. Yeah, I think the, the, the atmosphere uh, was beginning to, 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 to be tough. Of course, we had all the, the, the constitution ban, of course, after there were elections, but 1999 also was a year, I think, that was also in the continuum, in the continuation of the oppressive regime. So things have not changed much. 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 Eh, beti atom 1999 tadi cila gina fanya temen cewa lino You may continue to tell us what you were doing in 1999. Munga egali wah nyulan ga don def ki atom 1999. Yeah, we 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 continue the the work with the judiciary. Yeah, then kundiun tuin lige ak buntu bise itu wale ate. We did important uh, kind of uh, research. Uh, we did also some uh, some trainings, as I mentioned earlier. And, and some judges were kind of open. They were so when we finished the first uh, program, it was very successful. Many people were interested. And then we started to move to some specific issues, and I remember we uh we we the second one was quite a specialized one and we said that we need to talk about issues around locus sunday because there were a lot of human rights cases uh, remember um, the case of single nyasi and other cases where people will be detained arbitrarily but uh, when people try to protect and to get bail people were opposed uh standing so we thought uh, it was important that we discourse that and uh, the way Madam we witness, did it the interpreters yeah. if you can just make the statements a bit shorter so that they can interpret yeah. so we did uh, we did uh, we moved to a more specialized given the background at the time and some of the cases 
that uh, were also uh, kind of uh, uh, at the forefront. So we did uh, another work. And we brought judges from uh, different other countries, South Africa, uh, English speaking Cameroon, uh, Nigeria. And the European uh, Human Rights Court also. Uh, send a delegate. So it we really what we try, what were what we wanted to at the European time to Union called uh, We we we, tr we wanted to really create uh, some interest but uh, also to, and also to help the judiciary to to be in a network so that they don't feel isolated. But I think overall the results were kind of uh, mixed. There were interest still in the workshops, in some of the trainings. But I think uh, at that time the lawyers uh, couldn't or couldn't work to set up a human rights uh, committee within the bar. That was one of the lawyers. Item and gisne mune yona inena fanna bo hamne ni dene muna joko na ti chendi gante. That was one of the plans to help them really to create a platform so that they can develop solidarity among themselves. Bo na lo mo ne kon jublo abi pour na nyu fe na nyu am na buntu wo hamne dene muna joko lante nyu mune di dimbalante. Yeah, so basically that didn't that didn't work out. So we kept uh, the the engagement though with uh, the judiciary and uh, in the bar and uh Lunak Muji Uton Doh knew Daldi Japorek Linga Hamini Monek Dohan Minek Diganti Judiciary Agbabi. So your main aim and purpose was to actually instill human rights policies. Laws and practices. So that you'll be recognized in the jurisdiction. Yes, we, we were trying that too. Was your organization also working with other NGOs or other civil societies? Yes, there were a few organizations, especially local ones, working on human rights. Well, I think at that time, the African Society for International and Comparative Law was also based here. Mr. Emmanuel Juf was the, the coordinator, so we used to work quite a lot. Emmanuel Juf, I think there Is that was the even... same Emmanuel Juf that's holding the chair of the Commission of the Human yes. Rights presently? Yes. Emmanuel Juf, the Human Rights presently? Wow. You may continue. Yeah, and I think uh, 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 a defying moment for, for me personally was the next year, the, the April 10th. When the killing of the students happened, uh, we, we, we mobilized as... Gambians working within some organizations. And a witness. Can you tell this commission what you are referring to as the April 10 where students were killed? Said that we are not going to talk about the April 10. So we are here. For the first time, we are in April. We are here to talk about the April 10. The incident on April 10, 11, 2000, when the students were protesting. The dozen were killed. Or there were wounded and uh, many also. Were Can you 
Can you tell this commission who killed the students? I commission According to the information we, we, we gathered at that time, it was the security forces. You may continue. And uh, on the 11th, we, we met uh, at the African Society. Uh, and we set up uh, a coalition of human rights defenders. In fact, uh, we, we, we issued first uh, a declaration. We, we, uh, we, we issued a declaration uh, uh, there and started some media work. And that culminated in the creation of the coalition. Can you tell this commission how you issued the declaration? Um, uh, it was a long time, but I think uh, Emmanuel, uh, we met in, uh, in our office. Uh, with uh, uh, and then I, with our management, we discuss it. And uh, at the time, it was quite difficult. And uh, our director agreed that I can sign uh, in my individual capacity. Director, we, 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 but uh, we will not uh, sign uh, for the for the for the organization for the institute because we sign up so we we agreed uh, to to do it that way so i we both of us sign and uh, many other uh uh lamin silla was also the secretary uh, general uh, the local chapter of Amnesty International. Mohamed Lamin Silla, Mohamed Amen, Mohamed Kon, Secretary of the African chapter. Uh, he was also part of the core group. Mohamed Bokon, the group Gogo. And there were many other personalities. Dembaja, Mrs. Adilet, so say, uh, Binta, uh, Satang Chobate. I'm not sure if you're going to be in Bokon, Bokon, and she's going to be in the tour. I'm not I think I may miss one or two, but I think the the first day, I think it was about it was about that, and then after the coalition started to. You've named interesting names in the coalition. I'm not to you. I'm sorry, you're too danati, bolo mum. Can you tell us whether you made headway? Having formed this coalition. Gana bolen sose nyu nyu de pare human rights defenders yeah and also importantly uh, when we started to litigate uh, abubakar tambedu who also came back from studies yeah, also, he also joined the the, the team and uh, uh, they, we, we did couple of cases uh, definitely, I hear the case you got. Uh, and uh, also, there were a lot of public statements, declarations at that time. Yeah, I yena I kado yo hamne gine wone ko I declaration ti jamano bobu. And I think many students uh, were were also were freed at the end. Hamne yena kala yu bari nak muje gine yu budal dilen bai. At that time, also there was another coalition, but I think it was set up by lawyers through the Ministry of Justice. I can't remember exactly how it was, but there were a few lawyers also who volunteered because the, there were quite a lot of people who were arrested. Um, they, they were volunteering. Private lawyers also, they, 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 were, in, uh, they were also defending uh, many cases in the courts. Uh, lawyer, and uh, when I think the the the, the 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 fight started really to gel, I think the the authorities uh, 
got scared, I think, because uh, the judges were quite brave. I remember uh, there, were, there were a few cases where justice say, took really positive stance. And after I'm sure you know what happened to her. And uh, there were a lot of cases also taken to the Supreme Court in relation to April 10. And uh, there were a lot of cases also taken to the Supreme Court in relation to April 10. Supreme Court in relation to April 10. So I, I do believe that it's the culmination of the, the, all those work that really pushed the authority to realize that. Uh, they needed to have some cover. Because when the report of the commission they, they set up, remember there was a corona inquest, and then after they set up a commission, after that uh, they decided to reject the report of the commission. And after that, uh, they, they moved to adopt the indemnity bill. Uh, but maybe one or two cases before that. Well, in, in that process also, we realized that judges were kind of pressurized, but also human rights activists. And one of our spokespersons, Mohamed Lamin Silla, was detained by the NIA for yeah, many days. And the uh, prosecutor never brought any evidence. He was frustrated for, 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 for some time. And and when we went to the judge, I think because the case was quite sensitive. According to him, of course, and he uh, he he received us in his chamber. Uh, it was a Friday, and then he said that he would like to give bail, but uh, he needed to get the other side. Who was he referring to as the other side? The Ministry of Justice, and they were never, they were not coming forward. They were, they were dragging their feet for many, many days. And, uh, and uh, the person was still in detention without access to his family, his lawyers. So we were quite concerned. So you're telling this commission that he was detained beyond the 72 hours? Yes. Yes, yeah, it was the case. And we wow. found out after that he was maltreated. So then we left. And uh, uh, the other lawyers went to their chambers, and Emmanuel and I, we were going back to our offices. And before we got to our offices, we were called to say that he was released. And we called So the judge didn't adjudicate, uh, the, they didn't give the bail. Yeah, but he was released through other means, we guess. Uh, Could it have been as a result of the pressure that your group was putting? Yeah, there were a lot of public statements, a lot of interviews in international media. Uh, and, uh, also, he, he was working for Amnesty. No, uh, Amnesty International, Amnesty, uh, an organization. Amnesty, So, uh, we were released on the 17th of April. Uh, so, we were released on and there was nothing that he did. He made a declaration. I think at the time, uh, the only argument they brought forward was that he made a statement at the BBC. I think it was at that time a statement 
because he was our spokesperson. Moro was a la men, you mean Japan, ne more neckering, and Alta Fawati, la meni BBC. Can you tell us the actions he took after he was released from detention? Then you mona jil nag mommy and Diego le jil ganabo hamne bayi nenko finko to you. He stayed for a while. The photog si dirbu yagre. Then after he moved out of the country. Mugen fi chiriumi. Can you tell the commission why he found the need to leave this country? Mungawa commission belan mota mugen riumi. I would like to, maybe I'll, I will not be able to say it in public, but he decided to leave. Uh, Is it okay to just say that there was too much pressure on him to stay in the jurisdiction? him to stay in the jurisdiction? Yeah, and uh, wow. he was maltreated uh, at the NIA. Uh, and I think at that time also. The support that people would need when they were doing human rights work was not forthcoming from uh, different quarters. You may continue to tell us about the other cases that you assisted in. Your coalition. Uh, uh, there was the case of uh, Singul Nyasi. Uh, he was arrested and denied bail as well. So the coalition was supporting him. Can you tell the commission why he was arrested and detained? It was about his expression. Commission, we look at New Japan. He was part of a political movement. Uh, so he was And uh, I remember, I think the, the issue of Loki standard was raised during his case. Madam uh, uh, Witness, this is the second time you've mentioned Loki standard in the proceedings here. Can you just explain better so that the interpreters can actually interpret? I think it still exists uh, in the in the laws. It has not been here, uh, or, or maybe I'm not sure. It's yeah, like when somebody is detained and you want to apply for bail. Normally, they 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 will request that uh, you show an interest, kind of a family link, uh, a strong link uh, to warrant uh, the, to, to represent the person. Because sometimes when somebody is in detention arbitrarily, they don't give you, the, they are not able to give consent. Yeah, they are not able to give consent. So I think that uh, that issue came in, in his case at the beginning. Among others, of course, there, there were a lot of delaying tactics uh, not to give people their, their right to be to be bail. And uh, I think after he was released, uh, uh, he went to the police. And I think the case was dropped. And there was another well it was a, a bigger case, quite serious. There were many other lawyers, but the coalition helped a lot on the human rights dimension. It was the case of Dumo and others, you remember that case. Is it, is it correct that in that matter the persons were charged with treason? Yes. Wow. And there was a coalition of lawyers who handled that matter. Yes. Yeah, it took uh, quite some time and he was 
and uh, his family used to come quite a lot to us. I must say here that also they, they've been very, very brave women who, despite uh, some of the challenges, will, will push. I remember his wife was quite strong. She will, every week she will write letters, she will meet diplomats, she will meet human rights organizations. And really pushing uh, to, to, to get access yeah, to, to you know, the husband. You know, you know, you know, At this point, did you also have confidence in the judicial system? Yeah, at that time the Supreme Court was still working and quite independent. Jamano bo Supreme Court bi munge ligi te te men jamano bo dal nyonge dohak sen sago. And uh, I was not litigating; I was more on the human rights side. But I, I, the, the some of the judges also, uh, uh, some on the technical assistance, some were quite strong. I, I, I can remember vividly because we work with them. You further also did an observation of elections. The year of 2001. Can you tell the commission about it? Yeah, as, as, as the coalition grew, grew so we also looked at uh, some other other human rights related issues right to participate and uh, the elections were quite tense 2001 and uh, we, we got the uh, uh, accreditation from the IEC to to be part of the the, the observers and that component was managed uh, organized by Mrs. Adelaide Sose. And we all were observers so we went to the we were divided some went to the provinces so we were all divided uh, as, as member of the coalition to observe certain polling station and also we wrote a report and uh, Madam witness was it an easy task <laughs> The, it was it was okay i believe it uh, i think the situation was difficult in the country yeah uh, nak nek mbo dal jafé won lool fi ci bir rewmi but uh, the, that work in itself was not that much difficult because it's based on data what you what you see in the on the ground and uh, you just compile a report ligé bobu nak ndax tawato da jafé non ndax mu ngi aju rek ci li nga xamné lool nga nek di gis bu ko wéxé nga dajalé sa report yeah, and uh, we did that for the uh, presidential and then the parliamentary election that followed the next year. And that was for the 20, 2001 presidential and the 2002 parliamentary elections. The president 2001 and the deputy 2002. Yes, and uh, the report, uh, those reports really highlighted uh, few few uh, problems such as violence. There was a lot of violence. Actually, attacks against uh, opposition uh, militants. But also a lot of restriction on, on freedom of expression and access to media, particularly state media. Thank you. Madam Witness, at this point, um, we'll take a break, Mr. Chair, if we may take the break for the prayers and then we can come back. Right. Thank you very much, Mr. Council, and uh, thank you, Madam Senghor.
we will um, uh, resume at three o'clock. Councillor, is that okay? You have. If it's okay with the commission, maybe resume at two thirty. Two thirty. Yes. Fine. That's all right with me. Thank you very much. So we resume at um, at two thirty. Meeting is adjourned. Thanks. Assalamu <laughs> Kalau boleh nama, ag design boleh nama rek eksina, mana lain nak eksilain? Mungkin ni skin care plus latte dek, hamgen rek sing plusi comes in so many different ways. Our musical matuti, hangkeng. Wow. Man sen bo gila magai dek, hangkeng. Wow, Skincare plus of the Gambia. Ningen ko tanga mo di de falerek. Mungen nyo get chin number yi. Bude Gambia fila. Call lang yu si three six nine nine one three seven. Bude yung the United States tak. Call yu si three four seven. Seven three one zero zero seven one. Then I'll link next in contract with DHL. Munga from now on, believe me. Phone next to add direct. Boy, you need ring, ring. You dial up. Pagal la. We put you near. We put you. I'm gonna you on me. I'm gonna. From now on, pala believe me. Numbers in that la. Three four seven seven three one zero zero seven one. My United States. So number be fee locally fee. You can be a fee. My three six. Nine nine one three seven. Then I'll let you number you can give WhatsApp. But when you call, then you am. No, no regular night. Wow.